legislative reporter, also city, obviously, <laughs> Report to talk about the election. First question has to be, what happened? Well, that's the question everybody asks. Yeah. And does anybody have a really concise answer? No. There's a whole bunch of factors that went into it. But basically, the public didn't trust the NDP. Plain and simple. When it gets right down to it, that's the end result. The Liberals did an amazing job at being horribly negative, at being horribly nasty. And it worked for them. And they campaigned hard on that. They kept their message the same from beginning to end. The message was, and we said it here before, NDP evil, Liberals good. And that was the message they kept sending out over and over and over again. The NDP did not fight back, not until too little too late, the last week of the campaign, essentially. So what you end up with is, in the public's mind, you've got pretty much two years of NDP evil, Liberals good. We build the economy, they build they break, government. Yeah. So, And that's what happened in many ways. So when people got into the ballot box, they looked at the ballot, even if they were thinking of going for the NDP, they went, I don't know, mm. and went the other way. Now, it's a shock to everyone, not just pundits who were dead wrong. Right. Me among them, absolutely as wrong as could be. Uh, the pollsters, worse than me, way worse than me, they were predicting as many as 69 NDP seats last Unbelievable. night. Unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. But the party people were wrong as well, and their numbers are usually spot on, right. and they weren't even close. The Liberals didn't think they were going to win more than 30 or 35 seats, maximum. So you were at NDP headquarters yes. last night, and tell us what it was like, what was the mood before the results started to come in, and how did it change? Well, they had about 30 to 35 people preparing to win. Not just preparing to win, they were doing the practice walk. They were doing the practice camera shot of the new leader waving at the crowd. They were doing the practice speech. They were doing the practice warm up and introduction to the new premier. It was amazing. And I kept sitting there watching, going, You shouldn't be doing this in front of the entire media. Somebody's going to record this and it may come back to bite you. They did that in front of everybody. Everybody, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Are we surprised by uh, voter turnout? I am. Um, I thought that Elections BC had done an amazing job uh, at trying to persuade people to get out and vote and to make it easier for people to get out and vote. Uh, I thought that we did a great job in trying to get people out early, and that one worked. We did. Yeah. Yes, that I'm going to call they, that the Kim Emerson effect. They, they got 28% increase yeah. in advanced polling, and that's awesome. But general voting day. Uh -huh. To what do you attribute that? Like, how, how can we look at this as British Columbians and say that only 52% of us could, could find the time to vote? I, I don't think it's got anything to do with finding the time. Uh, and, and Elections BC made that easier for everybody to right. go anywhere they wanted. So it's not about finding the time. People are just fed up with politics and what happened last night is not going to change that or they just can't stand politics because they've never been engaged in any way. You have to engage people fairly early on. I'm not talking elementary school, but you have to engage people fairly early on. Get them a little interested, make them understand that the people that have the most direct effect in your lives are these people that you can mark an X for. Yes. So Teaching children about democracy is key. Let's talk a little bit about Jane Stirk. Yeah. Losing her riding. Do you think that the, she says, I'm stepping away oh, yeah, from no, this? No, what, uh, what's going to happen now? Well, I'll just tell you a funny little story. Okay. Andrew and Weaver, we the, the one Green Party candidate who won. Yes. Um, Andrew uh, thinks a lot of himself. He sent a note to Jane Sturck saying, when you're finished with your little event at your campaign office, why don't you come and join us at the Oak Bay Beach Hotel for a celebration? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so he... In all likelihood, will become the Green Party leader. Right. Um, but the Green Party, what's interesting, now that they've got a beachhead, will the NDP ever be able to win another election in BC? Maybe not, because the Greens do siphon away NDP votes, and there's many ridings where the Green Party vote took away a possible victory for the NDP. So now that the Green Party is establishing themselves with their first MLA ever, possibly the NDP will never, ever win again. Wow. And the liberal early on in our discussions leading up to this election, you were schooling us on. <laughs> you were no seriously because I mean we think as the public mm -hmm. that we kind of know what's going on in politics, but you are immersed in the culture. It's like covering sports and explaining mm -hmm. armchair quarterbacks yeah. how it's working over there. Uh, I didn't realize, and many viewers have reacted, didn't realize the the goal of using negative attack ads, mm -hmm. and that the, the fact that negative attack ads keep voters from voting. Yeah. Clearly, that tack worked 
beautifully for the liberals. Well, yeah, I mean, it keeps people from wanting to vote, as we just finished talking yeah. about, because people don't want to get engaged in that. They don't want any part of that. It's like, but but by the same token, they don't want the positive stuff either. Right. You know, I mean, it's it, they just don't want it. They don't want negative. They don't want positive. They just don't want to be a part of it. They just can't stand it. And that has to change or who knows what we'll end up with. It is really quite fascinating what happened. I couldn't believe it when we turned on the yeah. TV and got the coverage. Tuned into you on News 1130. By the way, to our partners, our sister station at News 1130, such great work, such hard work. Trina Wood, Jim Benny, yeah. Kim Emerson. If you ever need to know what's going on in our city and our province, minute to minute, you tune into News 1130. And uh, you know what else you get on News 1130? Russ LeCate's weather forecast. Uh.